you know, another six years, I'm probably going to be retired. So, uh, yeah, I'm enjoying every moment, um, that's for sure. And, you know, things like taking this fight on a bit more short notice than normal, you know, it's things like this I'm not missing out on. So now I try to live my life and saying yes, you know, and just do it and, you know, hope for the best. Nathaniel Wood, welcome back to TNT Sports and welcome back to Abu Dhabi. Familiar stomping ground, mixed results, excited to be back? Yeah, and uh, one reason is because now we have a crowd. You know, the last few times I've been here have been in the, um, the closed off, you know, COVID rules and you can't see anyone, that sort of thing. So I said to the UFC after my last fight, I actually asked if I could get on this card. I felt like it wasn't going to happen. You know, there was quite a few uh, booked up. So now we're here, you know, it's a little bit short notice than, than normal, but, um, you know, I'm always training. So, yeah, I get to uh, put on a show in front of a crowd this time. Is there an element of wanting to come back to put that Casey Kenny lost to bed officially or it was your last fight of bantamweight it was a fight mm -hmm. the night by the way it was a really close fight is there a little bit of that or are you just enjoying it if i'm time? honest no you know as far as i'm concerned I, i've watched that fight back so many times in the past and i'm like i don't see how i lost that you know and usually i'm the opposite of biased you know i'm usually very critical myself um but yeah just to come back to it's a beautiful country you know i come to dubai all the time with with my uh, my wife now um so we always come here on holiday, you know, to come here and actually fight. It's not too far from the UK, you know, beautiful weather, lovely people. And uh, as I say, now I get to fight in front of a, a crowd. This is your 10th UFC mm -hmm. cage walk. How crazy is that? When you think back to the debut, Johnny Eduardo, was it Utica or somewhere in the US, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. You know, it wasn't it was a glamorous Utica. location no, no. with all due respect, but Mate. when you think back now to where you were then to now, it it's a it scares the hell out of me. You know, my mum always said when I was growing up, she said, enjoy your life, it's gonna go like that. You know, she said, enjoy school, it's gonna go so quick. And I always thought, well, whatever, you know, what are you talking about? But now I'm like, oh shit. it goes quick. You know, I feel like it was only yesterday that I was 21. Yeah. Um, so to think, you know, the Johnny, Ed the other day I actually saw the Cage Warriors fight against Josh Reed and it says six years ago. And I was like, you know, another six years, I'm probably going to be retired. So, uh, yeah, I'm enjoying every moment, um, that's for sure. And, you know, things like taking this fight on a bit more short notice than normal, you know, it's things like this I'm not missing out on. So now I try to live my life and saying yes, you know, and just do it and, you know, hope for the best. Looking back, if what, what's one bit of advice you'd give that kid who made his debut 10 fights ago that you've learned? Stop stressing. You know, I was very... You know, in this sport, it's very hard, you know, in the UK to get mortgages, things like this. And, you know, I've done all that, but I think I was always putting a lot of pressure on myself. You know, I've got to make this work. You know, if I don't want to be back on the building sites, how am I going to get a mortgage? How am I going to, you know, get married, have a family? And it's all worked out. So, um, yeah, I kind of wish that I took a bit of pressure off myself, but maybe the pressure is what made me uh, do so well in this sport. So, um, yeah, I just need to uh, slow down and enjoy it more. That, that freedom, though, has brought, obviously, success, brand new weight division, mm -hmm. run of performances. You've looked outstanding since you came up. Do you look back and think, oh, maybe you should have gone it a little bit sooner? Yes, because I actually said, before I even got to the UFC, I said, I'm, I'm done at bantamweight. You know, yeah. I said it was, just, it was just killing me. I just wasn't happy. Um, I fought Chase Morton on another promotion, which was at featherweight, smashed the guy. I thought, you know, this is me. I said to my manager at the time, I said, look, I'm not going back down to Bantamweight unless it's a, a good opportunity. And Cage Warriors offered me Von Lee, a former UFC vet. So I thought, right, I'll take that. Then they offered me the, the Bantamweight title. I thought, right, I'll take that. Then I got signed by the UFC at Bantamweight. So obviously, you know, I had a, I was kind of forced into staying at that weight category. Then obviously John Dodson. And then after the Casey Kenny loss with the injuries, I felt like I just kind of fizzled out of that bantamweight division that there was no longer a kind of pathway if you like you know mm -hmm. i was looking at the rankings i was thinking okay you know if i can beat john dodson i can beat this guy and you know then i'm going to be here and there then i sort of thought oh man i'm you know i'm out of the party here i've got to start all again so i just thought you know what i'm going featherweight i do absolutely fine against the featherweights in the gym and you know i think that the proof's in the pudding you know i feel great at the weight i feel healthy and i've always believed that my technical side of things is enough to handle you know a couple of kilos extra so yeah. um yeah, you know, I'm, I'm glad I did it and I've got the speed advantage. As well as putting those wins together, I thought it was an important time 
this year as well, back in the summer, when you came out and said, listen, I'm a, I'm a fighter. On the outside, I look like I'm doing fantastically well. I'm flying. I'm back in a new weight division. I'm, I'm talking about rankings opportunities. But I also suffer with anxiety. I always, mm -hmm, I, mm -hmm. I always also have stress issues. And it felt like in that moment, something that you just did off the cuff. But was it premeditated? And were you surprised by the response as well? Because the response was just overwhelmingly positive. It felt like yeah. you helped so many people just by coming out publicly and saying, this is me, this is how yeah. I'm feeling, and this is how I'm dealing with it. Yeah, I was taken back because I honestly didn't plan on mentioning anything. I think this being asked the question about, you know, how, how do you prepare for your fight? And I said, look, when I deal with anxiety, you know, all it does is spurs me on to train even harder. And then it went from one thing to another. And then everyone's, you know, messaging me. And, you know, I kind of just said, look, I deal with OCD, anxiety. You know, I have done for many, many years. I'm on treatment for it. I'm on tablets for it. You know, I've never been embarrassed to talk about it, but I never felt the need to talk about it. You know, I've got plenty of people that I can talk to behind closed doors. Um, and I feel like sometimes there's people that What's the word? Maybe don't suffer as much, but they do it for the bit of clout, you know, mm -hmm. a bit of the limelight. It's very, you know, popular now to be dealing with mental health, that side of things. And I didn't want any of that kind of associated with me, which I hope it isn't because, you know, you can look at my medical history, you know, it's all down there on paper. It was way before I was even in the UFC. But um, yeah, when I started getting messages from people saying that it was helping them and that, you know, I didn't expect to have messages like, mate, to, ha to have someone like yourself who's in the UFC dealing with it makes me feel so much better. It was kind of a, all right, now I feel like I want to help people. You know, it's, um, it's a nice feeling when you think that there could be some kid out there that you've just helped who hasn't got anyone to talk to. Um, and yeah, now I've just kind of fell into that role of talking about it, and, which isn't a problem. You know, mm -hmm. it doesn't, doesn't embarrass me. I'm not embarrassed at the end of the day. I'm a, I'm a UFC fighter, so uh, what have I got to be embarrassed about? Listen, before I let you go, I want to wrap this up and say, Saturday night, Mohamed Naiman's going to be in the opposite corner. He's only had one fight in the UFC, albeit a good victory. Um, it may not be the opponent that you were driving towards. This isn't going to unlock that <coughs> ranking that you're, I know you're chasing, certainly for 2024, but it keeps you busy, mm -hmm. keeps you active. What are we going to see? What version of Nathaniel Woods rocking in there on Saturday night? A very fast pace and dominant Nathaniel Wood. Love it. Brilliant. Appreciate it, man. Thank well you for having me. Appreciate it.